Welcome back to Property Ask Echo. Did you know that the South African property market has experienced a 5% annual growth over the past decade? Despite significant economic challenges such as rising interest rates and a volatile economy, in fact, recent economic changes have made it even more challenging for first-time buyers to secure affordable financing. Surprisingly, only 30% of South Africans manage to find the best financing deals, potentially missing out on saving up to 20% on their property investment costs. In today's video, we'll be uncovering the best financing options for South African property investments. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time buyer, understanding the financing landscape is crucial to making informed decisions. Stay tuned as we dive into the details backed by expert insights, real-world examples, and compelling data. If you are new here, give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you find it helpful. First, let's talk about traditional bank loans. One of the most common financing options for property investment in South Africa is through traditional bank loans. Banks such as APSA, Standard Bank, and NetBank offer various mortgage products tailored for property buyers. South African banks offer competitive interest rates. As of 2023, the average interest rate for home loan is around 11.75%. Banks provide flexible loan terms ranging from 20 to 30 years. Applicants need a good credit score, stable income, and a minimum of 10%. Jane, a first-time home buyer from Johannesburg, secured a home loan from Standard Bank with a 7% interest rate, enabling her to purchase her dream home with manageable monthly payments. From my personal experience, traditional bank loans are reliable and offer security, but it's essential to compare different banks' rates and terms to find the best deal. My advice is always negotiate with banks for better rates and terms. Use online comparison tools to evaluate different mortgage products. What do you think is the most important factor when choosing a traditional bank loan? Number two, government-backed loans. The South African government offers various loan programs to assist first-time home buyers and low-income earners through the finance-linked individual subsidy program, FLISP. FLISP provides subsidies ranging from 27000 to 121000 based on the applicant's income, available to first-time home buyers with an income between 3500 and 22000 rand per month. It requires proof of income, property purchase agreement, and a home loan approval from a registered financial institution. Mark, a school teacher from Devon, used FLISP to get a subsidy of 80,000 rand, which significantly reduced his loan amount and monthly repayments. According to recent data from the National Housing Finance Corporation, over 50,000 South Africans have benefited from FLISP program, making home ownership more accessible for low to middle income earners. Here is a tip, leverage government subsidies to reduce your overall loan amount. Ensure you meet all eligibility criteria before applying. Next up, private lenders. Private lenders and mortgage brokers offer alternative financing options for those who may not qualify for traditional banking loans. Private lenders often have more flexible lending criteria compared to banks. Loan approvals and disbursement are generally faster. Typically, private loans come with high interest rates due to increased risks. Lisa, an entrepreneur from Cape Town, secured a loan from a private lender 
when she couldn't meet the strict criteria of traditional banks. Although the interest rate was higher, the faster approval process helped her secure a prime property for her business. Recent reports from Funding Hub show that approximately 20,000 South Africans have successfully secured financing through private lenders, enabling them to invest in properties that would have otherwise be out of reach. Private lenders can be a viable option for investors with unconventional income sources or lower credit scores. The key strategy here is carefully vet private lenders, compare their terms and interests with traditional banks to ensure you are getting a fair deal. Number four, real estate investment trust REITs. For those who prefer not to take on direct property ownership, investing in REITs can be an excellent alternative. REITs offer exposure to a diversified portfolio of properties. Unlike physical property, REIT shares can be easily bought and sold on the stock exchange. REITs typically pay out regular dividends to investors. David, an investor from Pretoria, allocated a portion of his portfolio to a well-performing REIT, enjoying both capital appreciation and steady dividend income without the hassle of property management. According to the South African REIT Association, there is over 300 billion invested in REITs, benefiting from diverse portfolio and regular dividend incomes. REITs are perfect for investors looking for property exposure without the hassle of tenant headaches. Invest in REITs with a strong track record and a portfolio that aligns with your investment goals. To wrap up, understanding various financing options available can significantly impact your property investment success in South Africa. From traditional bank loans and government-backed programs to private lenders and REITs, each option has its unique advantages and considerations. Always do proper research and consider consulting with a financial advisor to tailor the best financing strategy for your specific needs. What financing options have you explored for your property investment? Share your experiences and thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to know your thoughts and experiences. Don't forget to answer the poll question. What do you think is the most important factor when choosing a traditional bank loan. If you found this video helpful, you might also enjoy our video on Pretoria Residential Real Estate Insight to Invest Smart. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest content. See you in the next video.